you can introduce it. Uh, okay, our, our next speaker is Professor Lian Jiang. He's the Secretary General of uh, ISMIVS, International Society of Minimally Invasive Surgery and uh, Virtual uh, Surgery. And his topic will be pregnancy outcome of high food treatment for uterine fibroids and adenomyosis. I've known Professor Lian Jiang uh, personally. I've met him many times. He actually came last year to uh, in fact, year before last, to give us a talk in the Obstetrics and Gynecology Society of Malaysia's Congress. Now, Professor Zhang Lian is the director of the Chongqing Haifu Hospital. It's a recent appointment. Congratulations, Dr. Uh, Professor. She is a chief editorial board member of the International Journal of Hyperthermia. He's a professor of the State Key Laboratory of Ultrasound Engineering in Medicine and a co-founder by the Ministry of Science and Technology and the Chongqing Medical University. He's also a professor at the Chongqing Medical University. Uh, he's, he's received the first class in Science and Technology Progress Award of Chongqing in China in the year 2009, and second class in the National Science and Technology Progress Award of China in 2010. He has published uh, numerous papers, 80 over papers in international and domestic journals, and more than 60 of them are SCI papers. And the highest impact factor is a, uh, of a single paper is 16.95. And I, I quote many of his papers when I give talks. And uh, it's a privilege to introduce and welcome Professor Zhang Lian to give his talk. Thank you very much, Dr. Silva. Uh, it's my great honor to be here and have this chance to, to give this presentation. So first, I would like to Can you see? Can you see my PPT? Not yet. Not yet, Prof. Not yet. Not yet. Did you see it? Yes. OK. So uh, today, I, I would like to talk about pregnancy outcome, outcomes of patients with uterine fibroids or adenomyosis after high-intensity focus ultrasound treatment. So as you know, high-intensity focus ultrasound is a long in Invasive treatment modality. Here is how this slide shows how it works. Like this is a transducer. The ultrasound beams were generated from the this transducer and focused at a small point. During the treatment, the ultra, ultrasound beams penetrate the human body and just focus at the tiny point of the uh, tumor. So uh, then during the treatment we can see the grayscale changes. And like here, this is liver, here's the pancreatic cancer. And you can see the hypoarchoic lesion. Then during treatment, we can see the grayscale changes like this. So when the temperature increased over 65 degrees, and we can see the changes like this, then tumor uh, necrosis occurred. So here we can see how did we do this? Like this is trans we move the focus right here, and you can see the grayscale changes. Then we start solicate again. So we move the focus to this point. Now we can see the changes here. So when the grayscale changes area cover the whole tumor, then the we can terminate the treatment. So after treatment we can use MRI or contrast ultrasound to evaluate the treatment efficacy. So for example, this is a uterine fibroids. 
uh, you can see the perfusion before have treatment. Then during treatment or after the treatment done, we use a contrast ultrasound to evaluate the treatment efficacy. We can see there, there was low perfusion. So MRI also shows the per, low perfusion in the fibroid. You can see from here, the tumor can be completely ablated and low perfusion. And you can see the surrounding structures, there was low damage. So it means no damage to the uh, uterine, like the uh, muscles. So after treatment, like this multiple uterine fibroids, we can see here, this before, and one day after that, even the, this one, even the, this small one, this tiny one, we can also ablate. And uh, four months after that, MR shows this treated fibroid disappeared. And only a small part of this one still there. And you can see the normal structures of the uh, uterus. So also we can use this to uh, selectively, selectively ablate the adenomyotic lesion and minimize the like the adenomyotic lesion and relieve the symptoms. And you can see selectively, selectively ablate, ablate the lesion. So after the treatment, also some case, you can see the uterus, for example, like this case, we can see the adenomyotic lesion located in the posterior wall of the uterus. And here, contrast enhanced, enhanced altered MRI. So after the treatment, this area, we ablated lesion over there. And four months after that, you can see the treated region almost disappeared, only a small part over here. And also you can see the posterior wall of the uterus returned to normal thick, almost normal level. So this contrast Contrast enhanced MRI shows the thickness of the posterior wall of the uterus is similar to the anterior, anterior wall of the uterus. It means we can use this technique to precisely ablate the lesion and give the chance, offer the chance to the, the patient to get the uterus returned to normal. So about the pregnancy after high treatment, we already published some papers. And I don't know exactly how many patients, how, I mean, the numbers all, all over the world, probably thousands, something like that. But in my center, uh, like yes, uh, I just got the number yesterday. We already have 293 patients with uterine fibroids uh, delivered babies after high food treatment. And also uh, we have 31 patients with adenomyosis uh, deliver, uh, after half treatment delivered the babies. So all the cases, I mean, we didn't have any um, complications during the like, pregnancy or du during delivery. So here is a, and uh, this uh, cases from my center. Actually, I didn't put the Liu number here, there's a 241 from my center. You can see these patients who uh, want to uh, conceive when they came to our center for high treatment and the age, every age was 33 years old. And uh, here is the BMI. And also you can see we have the intramural fib fibroids and subsur serosal fibroids and also some mucosal fibroids. Here are the different type of the fibroids and also different locations. Like here and the size, the leading number of the size was almost uh, around six centimeters in diameter. And the volume of the fibroids is 47 centimeters cubic. So this is a table shows a 
uh, the changes, the volume changes of, of the uterus and the uterine fibroids of these patients. And here, this before have treatment, the volume of the uterus, this uh, volume of the fibroids. And one month, you can see the numbers. And here, six months after that, we can see the shrinkage rate is around 70 um, percent of the uterus. And here is the shrinkage of the uterine fibroids is around 44 percent of the fibroid shrinkage rate. So this table is very important. And because at that time, we just we told the patients uh, to try to uh, don't get pregnant before six months after have treatment, but you can see from these patients, it's 152 patients already delivered the babies. This all the numbers. And uh, one month after high flu, eight of them get pregnant. For these patients, because they didn't listen to us, because before have treatment, they said never get pregnant. So also we had 17 patients get pregnant at one and three months after high flu. And here, 27 cases get pregnant between six and six months after high flu treatment. Around uh, 100 patients get pregnant after six, six months after high flu treatment. And you can say we, these patients with the solitary fibroids and also some had the multiple fibroids and also different type fibroids is size, we compared. You can see uh, so we had some patients had the fibroids smaller than four centimeters in diameter, and also we had uh, more patients had a fibroids larger than four centimeters. And here, I just want to show you how, uh, like, like you may ask, why this patient can get conceived uh, six, within six months after that and didn't have problem. Here, I just want to show you a case. Like this patient had multiple uterine fibroids. You can see clearly this one was not so large, but they, she had many and also some smaller ones. And you can see this before. If we perform a myomectomy, probably we will suggest her to get pregnant two years after uh, myomectomy. So for this case, she didn't get pregnant before. So after her treatment, accidentally, he, she got pregnant one month after high flu. So this is the uh, MRI. We got one day after high treatment, you can see all these fibroids was completely ablated. There was low perfusion. You can compare with the, this image before and also even a smaller one. So we ablated. The most important, we can see that from MRI, we can see there was low damage to the smooth muscles of the uterus. You can see the perfusion was normal. So that's why probably we don't need to worry about that. So that's why she uh, get pregnant one month after that and uh, deliver babies at terms. So also you may worry about the, if the, the high treatment were damaged, the endometrium from this image, you can see clearly here is the endometrium. And this is normal uh, smooth muscle of the uterus. And you can see here there is low damage to the endometrium. So we can precisely take the fibroids without damage to the normal structures. So also, here is another case. I just, uh, you know, uh, just somebody asked a question about how to avoid to damage the endometrium. For, for example, like this case, this patient had like the type two uh, in uterine fibroids. You can see here is the endometrium. And this is the fibroids, the size was 5.8 centimeters in diameter. So you can see here also endometrium was there, was very close to the uh, endometrium. So for this case, we treated with HIFU and one day after HIFU treatment, the MRI showed the fibroids 
was completely ablated. Here is the endometrium. So the margin between the endometrium and the uterine fibroids was eight millimeters. So 0 0.8 centimeters here, there was low damage. So for this case, three months after that, she went to have the IVF and already successfully delivered a baby. So this, uh, this about the uterine fibroids. Here, I just want to show you the results of the patients with adenomyosis treated with, treated with a high flu. So this from Chongqing Haifu Hospital from April 2011 to June 2021. So 31 patients with adenomyosis already delivered babies after HIFU. Here is about the baseline characteristics of these patients. You can see here about the age and also the cause of the disease, like the average is like seven years from the beginning to the treatment time. And also this is about the location. And four patients had the adenomyotic lesion at the anterior wall of the uterus and 12, 12 of them had the, had the lesion located at the posterior wall of the uterus. The others had the diffusion. And here is about the volume. This patient and painful menstruation, 19 cases and heavy menstruation, the three of them had. So this is about the treatment time. So the treatment time is around uh, one hour and 50 minutes. And here is about the solication time. So and this is the energy we used, the NPV ratio for, end, for the adenomyosis was rather large because it's different from the uterine fibroids. For this kind of pain, for adenomyosis, we have to protect because there was low margin, then we have to leave uh, enough distance to avoid like the damage to the endometrium, also like the subsorum. No damage to this area. So the lung perfused volume ratio uh, should be not large. And I, I, I think uh, for our case, like this 31 cases, the lung perfused volume just around like the 40% like this. So here is about the range. So the symptom improvement after have treatment, here is before the pain score is around seven, four, seven points and three months after that significantly decreased. And also menstruation uh, like reduced by 50%. Significant difference was observed. Here is about the, the conceive, like 27, 27 cases conceived literally, and uh, four patients went to have IVF for the uh, adenomyosis patient. And delivery, 24 cases had a C-section, and three cases deliver vaginal delivery. So also show you some cases like this case and uh, this patient, uh, she was 26 years old, presented with dysmenorrhea for 10 years and also with aggravated symptoms for one year. Dysmenorrhea starts one to two days before the period until one to seven days after the period. So the most severe pain lasting one to two days and she was unable to get out of the bed to work. So she married for three years with her pregnancy. And they tried different way to help this patient, but didn't work. So when they um, had the machine, like the uh, GSA 200, then uh, we treated, treated this case, like here, with the lung perfused volume, just one, 51%. So after treatment, the patient get conceived two months after that, uh, even though she had a induced abortion, but uh, four months later, 
she conceived again and delivered the babies. And here is another case, this patient, and you can, from the history, we can see, uh, and also from the MRI, you can see the lesion, adenomyotic lesion, located at the posterior wall of the uterus. And uh, we just ablated part of this, like 51% of the volume. She, luckily, she conceived and later, and deliver a baby at, at terms, even though, of course, is a C-section for this, for this case. So, I mean, from this kind of, from our results, HIFU is really helps this patient for those, I mean, like they didn't get pregnant before and it helps. So I think we can do a lot of research to confirm this kind of findings. And also another, another thing I want to emphasize about that. So we didn't have any complications during, for this patient during, uh, during the pregnancy, also during the deliveries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Lian Zhang. Are there any questions? I, I think many of the questions uh, uh, Professor Ai Li Jiang has uh, replied. Um, yeah. Let me see. Yeah. The one question is Do we need to deliver a patient by caesarean section after a high foo? And yes, that's a good question because uh, uh, from in China, actually, the C-section rate was very high. So from our patients, it seems the C-section rate was high, but actually it was not really lead. So recently the doctors from Spain, from they published their results. So like 64% 64, 64 of the patients deliver literally, like the vaginal delivery. So it's a really lead C-section because like we said, uh, we can uh, precisely ablate the lesion and to protect the normal smooth muscle of the uterus. Another very good question is, how about uterine rupture during pregnancy in post hyphu adenomyosis patients? Any experience? Uh, so this is very important. That's why, so to avoid this kind of um, Incidents. I mean, this kind of complication. So this, in, the most important is about the ablate, the wrench. So that's very important to avoid this kind of things. So that's why I said we don't need ablate. If the patient don't want to get pregnancy in the future, we can ablate large size of the and adenomyotic lesion. But for those who want to get pregnancy, 50% is enough. Then we can combine with other treatment. So to avoid this kind of thing. So in my center, we didn't have this kind of patients. I mean, get the uterine rupture during pregnancy. We don't have. And also in, the, in, China, in China, in other centers, I didn't hear about this either. Well, another good question is, what is the best time to tell a patient to get pregnant post high foo for fibroids and adenomyosis? So, yeah, uh, before we just always suggest them to wait for six months because after six months, the uterine uh, fibroids, they were shrank, the shrinkage rate is like 50%. So six months will be good for them. But so right now we found like many patients get pregnant even uh, three months after that, even one month after that didn't have any problem. So, I mean, depends on the size and on the, uh, on the numbers of the fibroids. So generally three months after high full should be okay. Okay. I think the big advantage is you don't have an incision on the uterus, so you don't worry about uh, you try and rupture and things like that in uh, in haifu compared to uh, myomectomy. Another question is: Is haifu increases preterm birth? 
Um, so far, yeah, that, that's also a good, good question. So based on my uh, experience, our results, so high after high treatment were decrease preterm birth. So probably like uh, Dr. Silva already, a, already gave a you know, very wonderful presentation already showed us that's why. So that's why, based on my experience, same thing. Yeah. Or decrease a preterm birth. If anything is going to decrease preterm births, yeah. Is HIFU, uh, will HIFU increase implantation failure or early miscarriage? Um, I think also, um, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's the same like the, uh, the previous question. So also, uh, we're decreasing miscarriage. I think I forgot to put uh, one table to compare before and uh, after high food, like the miscarriage rate, significant decrease in my uh, center. Okay, thank you, Professor uh, Lian Zhang, for this wonderful lecture. It's always nice to listen to you and motivate me to do more high food. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, you very much. <laughs> and you already did a very good job. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you very much. Okay, I pass the, uh, 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 the baton to Professor Reilly. Professor Reilly, 